Are we there? Hey everybody, how you doing? The Beard Butchers are hanging out live on a We're Saturday right afternoon. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. beautiful day in Ohio. March 27th, and we're mid-60s. So today we're gonna to be doing some tomahawks, some bison tomahawks. Cody Rich, you may remember him, um, came all the way from Bozeman, Montana. He's here, and um, we're gonna be talking about a foundation organization that he's involved with. Yeah. But more importantly, we're gonna be doing some bison tomahawks. So as we gain um, some viewers or subscribers here, you feel free um, to pop some questions over there. Hi there. Um, and we'll try to get some questions too. But um, let me grab this here for from you, Seth. We've got the Traeger 885, and we're going to be talking about a way that you can actually win this grill, um, a raffle that we have set up. So we're going to be talking about that. But over here, more importantly, we've got two bison tomahawks. Um, we're gonna be throwing them on the Traeger. You guys are familiar with uh, the re the reverse Look sear method. That. What These do you think, beautiful. Cody? Those think you can hammer one of those? Yeah. Fernando watching from <laughs> Chile. Yeah. Look at that. Those look funny. So I'm gonna be doing some seasoning. I'm gonna be doing some grilling. Cody's gonna be doing uh, sort of a podcast style interview, and um, he's gonna explain raise them outdoors. We're gonna have. A good afternoon stay tuned follow along you guys are in for a treat yes so um just to touch on it briefly and then we'll circle back to it cody's organization is called raise them outdoors and the um, organization is to get more kids um basically all kids involved in the hunting fishing and uh, shooting sports outdoors obviously so but I think we should start by getting these steaks on the smoker. Let's yes. get the steaks on the grill. That way they have a time to um, kind of come up to temp. We're gonna do reverse sear. Um, and then while the grill is working its magic, we're going to go into um, sort of the podcast. So yeah. without further ado. Here, you want me to take that? You got it. Go for it. All right. All right. I'm gonna take over because uh, these guys are better looking than me. But we're gonna do <laughs> some tomahawks. These guys are gonna teach me how to do tomahawks right out the gate. And we're gonna do reverse sear. Starting with our black seasoning, goes really good on red meat. So we're just gonna start with a, a nice liberal coating of seasoning on these. We're gonna hit them on all sides. And pretty simple process. We're gonna put them on the trigger. We're gonna take them up to about 110 degrees, and then we're gonna sear them on the birch barrel that you see behind me. So. If you go to the Raise Them Outdoors um, page, you can see what this event is about. You can put in for the Traeger, and we just got word the Birch Barrel is gonna throw in a Birch Barrel as well. So go over and uh, help support the kids. Can we put a link in there? How does that work? Well, we're gonna figure it out right now. Let's see here. Just don't end it. I don't think that's gonna do it. Um, yeah, don't end it. I don't think you can put a link on the I can YouTube live. Yeah. Sure All right. That. So, just go to the Raise My Doors Instagram or YouTube. Either one. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you're on YouTube. So, if you just search Raise Them Outdoors on YouTube or, go or to, open another browser or whatever. Go but to, if you to, if you uh, follow us on Instagram, yeah. we put up a bunch of links on our story today. Go to our bio. Go to the link tree. You can find the uh, Raise Them Outdoors link, and you can go from there. Yep. So, but I think it's really important that we point out an opportunity to win this. Um, particular model, the Ironwood 885, as you guys know, we are really high on this grill. So when reverse searing, obviously the first step, especially with something this thick, is low and slow. Um, whatever method you're using today, we're using the pellet smoker, but we've got it set to 165, and we're just going to let it go until we reach an internal temperature of um, about 110, and then we're going to switch over the birch barrel for the, for the sear. So reverse sear is essentially get it to within about 10 degrees of your internal temp get it to a hot surface and sear that outside but we'll talk so, our way got, through all that, that birch barrel going? it is come check we it got, out we got the birch barrel going and she's hot so we're currently at about uh close to 700 degrees on the birch which that's going to be perfect to sear off these tomahawk steaks on go back picture great when it comes time, we're ready to go. Okay, so we're going to be giving away 
or raffling off, excuse me, doing raffle tickets for a birch barrel and we got raffle tickets for the Traeger, both of which, and if anybody wants to comment and put the link in there, that would be really helpful because we didn't think ahead. We should have like a, a thing. Can you yeah. do that? You guys are YouTubers, like you put the thing up there. You say we, need, we need uh, Spencer. <laughs> we need Spencer. We, we need our SEO guy. So tell us about these bisons. Scott, is so, it, is yep. it multiple bisons? Um, well, I think it's just bison is the plural and singular form. These particular animals were about 500 yards behind us. Um, that's where they spent their entire life and then we butchered them. Um, so they came from our herd right through the back door and um, they're, it's, they're gonna be awesome. Like when we did the, the porterhouses, yeah. I mean, absolutely amazing. So. so I wanna talk a little bit about some of the history stuff. What, uh, so I was just talking to your dad and he kind of started with bison and that was like nobody did that it was unknown yep he was kind of the black sheep of the, the community because he certainly had bison, was right? especially in ohio um bison certainly the cornerstone of our foundation because this whole existence started with a dream um with bison um, my dad wanted to raise bison and he wanted the easy to... top of butcher someone that's says. right man. <laughs> yes so he wanted to, um, I'm, not, I'm not touching you, I just need your phone. Okay. <laughs> he wanted to put a package of hot dogs on every table in America, bison hot dogs to be specific. And we're kind of living that dream because um, while we're not doing it with bison, we only sell from our retail store here, we're doing it with this brand. Um, in fact, that's his face right there by putting seasoning, spices, and sauce all across the world because it it's a way for us to, to actually reach literally anybody watching. Yeah. Um, so his dream was kind of realized through the Beard of Butcher brand. Um, but we always, our first love was bison and remains so. So like when we get an opportunity um, to throw something in the grill, it's going to be bison. So talk a little bit about those early days when he was basically struggling and it was just a you know labor of love and, and it was not what it is today because it took Super. a lot of years to get to this point right yep so we all talk about this a lot and we'll say like you know what you see now if you stumble across our platform is very you know the tip of the iceberg underneath it is this this 20 plus years um when my dad first purchased the the meat business um it was because he was having bison butchered here and he wanted to take full control well actually the, the previous owner was was getting out of the business. So my dad, while raising bison with really no intent of, of actually owning the processing step when the when the um, opportunity presented itself, he bought the, the, the slaughterhouse. And with it came a, um, a established business of custom slaughter, um, not just for bison, but for, for mostly beef, pork, lamb. Um, and at the time, this was 93, 94, when that transition took place, when he bought it, um, we were, you know, we'd grown up a farm and we'd been around butchering and stuff like that on the farm. Uh, we certainly weren't um, butchers, but we came in to, I guess, start working, helping out, apprenticing. And, um, and so we learned from the, the very first step, which, you know, something arises as livestock, how to take it through the slaughter step, the dry aging, the processing, and then to make further processed meats like the, the snack meats and stuff like that. But um, it was very tough early on because um, with the you know the general nature of the business, it's a tough business, except, yeah. especially if you're involved in the slaughter operation. But the um, the previous owner, after one year of non-compete, opened up uh, uh, basically this, the, the custom butcher business again down the road. Well, my father was counting on that to pay the bills. Um, because he was trying to establish the bison business um, and, and sell more meat, but he didn't have those sales. So he needed the custom side of things. Yeah. And um, when the previous owner opened up, the uh, custom customers that were loyal to, to that former owner went to his new establishment. And so the answer was um, ostrich and deer. So at the time in 1995 through 1998, ostrich was really popular, uh, huh. healthy red meat or alternative. So uh, my dad started butchering ostrich for guys as a custom, uh, you know, basically an option. And a lot of people got into raising ostrich really quick. So um, I think about 96 or 97, we did like, um, you know, 30, 40 ostrich a week. They all had to be hand plucked and skinned and cut and, um, and then in in the fall we started um, deer processing 
for local hunters. Because what was the, pre- the what the, was the goal? Like, I mean, I, you stay had to alive. Do, stay alive. It was right? just literally don't make, make don't the mortgage. die. Make the mortgage. Yeah, that was that was it. Pay yeah, the bills, right? Absolutely. But and, do you think your dad always had this like, you know, I want to make bison the meat? Oh yeah. Oh, for certain. Yeah, for certain. Yep, for sure. but, like the way yep. to get there is like if we gotta you know do custom processing or we gotta do ostrich. Like you just do that whatever was, you have that was to ex- do. That was exactly mm-hmm. exactly it. Take every amount of work possible just to keep the lights on. Um, just real quick. Could somebody comment and, and let us know if you can hear okay? Because um, we'll just talk louder. We have a little bit of road noise. Um, just let us know that um, you guys can hear and, and maybe we'll just step up the volume a little bit. Okay, everybody's, say, everybody's saying that sounds good. So okay. that's cleared up. Good. So, um, but yeah, the, the, the bison, you know, dream, so to speak, um, was, you know, perhaps maybe to, to, to grow it to a national product delivered by, um, you know, so the name White Feather came from the pioneer heritage my, ha- my family had and my father and mother had named the business White Feather Bison Company. So the goal was to put White Feather Bison Company products on, you know, every table in America. And, um, and, and but what happened was the custom meat business kind of took over and bison was always there, but, you know, maybe more or less got moved to the back burner. Yeah. But through the Beard of Butcher brand, we've kind of, with Seth and I found in that side of the business, we've had a way of actually getting a product. It was kind of our parents' dream was getting a product out to the masses. So is that intentional? When you sat down, you're like, you know what, we should create this. It'll be giant. Um, we're guaranteed success. No. Uh, no what clue. Was, I mean, what was like the step between, I would say, like what your dad built and you take it, you guys take it to the next level. Like what, what was the thought process or like what was the intention? It, so we, we just really enjoyed cooking and we wanted a really good spice because like I know personally at home, I had, you know, garlic powder, um, onion powder, salt, you know, maybe some paprika and all these things in my cupboard. And I would just make a spice maybe as I was growing, whatever. Seth took a recipe that um, came from his, his wife's mother and he started tweaking with it a little bit. It was some, I don't know, some recipe they had. And so we we decided to take and start putting that on pre-season products for the, for the meat store. Um, it didn't have a name, didn't have anything. So with, with the uh, as people started tasting it, they were they were really liked it because it came, uh, you know, pre-season pork butts and things like that. We started putting those little tubs and, and selling it, and still didn't have a name. And we then, knew we knew when people started coming back in the shop requesting more that we were like, all right, we need to bottle this stuff, we need to brand it, we need to start selling it. Yeah, we were in fact giving it away most of the time. <laughs> but um, uh, a guy that worked for us at the time said, hey, um, well, we actually this was like 2011, 2012, and beards were becoming really popular. So we got um, a competition going amongst ourselves and a, and a couple of the guys we worked with about growing our beards. Well, we, um, Seth actually sat down one day and he started a, um, a Facebook uh, like page or whatever called the Northeast Ohio Facial Hair Club. <laughs> and good reason to go out with a bunch of guys and yeah. hang out. Yeah, we'd Grow have beards. these meetings or whatever. Yeah. So he's like, you know, you should just take and brand that uh, preseason stuff as, as, as the Bearded Butcher or, yeah. you know, Bearded Butcher approved. So we got a sticker made up and his wife um, made a caricature of our dad's face from a hunting video or a photo that we had. And it was just like, literally like, this will be the stamp of approval on the preseason products with our spice. Oh. And it'll, be, say, it'll say Bearded Butcher approved. And our dad's always had a beard. So we're like, you know, let's just, let's just, um, put everything together you know the 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 fact that this was our dad's dream the beard thing uh you know he's always had a beard the beard thing's cool um and we got this uh, club going we're just going to say that the the beard of butcher approved this product and it you know everybody loved it it came in the store so we started putting it in actual shakers and things like that and then you know three four years went by and and we're selling it off the countertop and i was like i'll throw up a website you know um build a website and, and just and threw it on there during during that process we we figured that we better start our trademarks because we we kind of felt like hey you know we're on to something here and we better protect it because if, if our name starts getting out there and we're not you know properly trademarked things could go bad for us. So that's something we, we spent doing in the, in the early years 
is making sure we got with our legal advisors, got everything trademarked. So if it's Bearded Butcher and it's in the United States, we, we own it. We own it all. It's a stamp of approval. Stamp of approval. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We are the Bearded Butchers. If you see anyone's other ones out there, they're not supposed to be. So yeah, just, and, just for, for clarity. And frankly, I recall at the time, you know, I went to a meeting at the attorney's office and, and, and all these trademarks they were going to prepare or whatever. And I was like, you know, kind of swallowed kind of hard because it's like we didn't even intend for the business to become, you know, national brand. Um, but I'm glad that we had the, for, the foresight at the time. But as, um, and then the deer thing, we were, uh, we were starting to get involved with, you know, the spice was, was kind of getting our name out there. And a local outfitter store asked us to do a demonstration um, at their store, a live event, in um, October of 2016 to basically fabricate a deer in front of a live audience. So Seth shot a doe, um, the weekend was coming up, he shot it a few days ahead of time, we had to hang in the cooler, and the day before the event, they pulled the plug. They're like, well, the weather was kind of warm, but they, they, they just got cold feet. And so um, I, Seth's like, well, it was a Friday and we had planned our whole day to go down to this outfitter store and cut the steer. So Seth's like, we got to cut it anyway. Um, let's just put it on Facebook. Just a live video. Here's, here's my cell phone. Let's video it. Let's put it on Facebook. Yep. So I'm just literally holding the phone and he, I, I said, hey, I'm Scott Perkins. Seth's got a deer. He's going to cut the deer or whatever. Very first phone, uh, very first video. Forgot. I think two people watched it live and just literally just cut through the deer forgot about it a month or two later well, so wait. i was like did you know that video has like over half a million views i was like no way and he's so like, we had a facebook page that went from about maybe 40 50 followers to like twelve thousand. Wow. over like a two-week period yeah wow. yeah it, it just it just absolutely blew up so he's like we had a youtube channel but i think it had one video and it was just like a walk through of the plant and no views or maybe a few views or whatever and it had been sitting there for a while i think since march so it was later that year and he's like i'm just going to throw this video up on youtube so again um it's it's not in um it's not in the horizontal format it's vertical it's one shaky one take whatever but again it, it just went crazy on youtube and that was kind of the beginning of the youtube um following if you will just was how to cut this deer that was the I would say that particular incident was the the launch, the, the catapult. Yeah, I yeah. hey, like, uh, kind of a business question for you guys. Like, like, you guys have done a really good job of taking happenstance and running with it. Like taking things that are they you know, just happened or started to go well and you ran with it. So you know, some people are like, man, we just fell into this or we got lucky. How? What advice do you have of knowing when to like follow these little threads of success and and take like the seasoning, for example. You're like, oh man, people like this. We should do a thing. I think or, that or like forcing it and knowing when to hey, people don't like this. So so a couple things are if you want to no, take back and hold my I, thought. No, I think you're gonna go the same same route. Okay, so. well if I don't, you can add yeah. to it. So. You know, it sounds cliche, but you know, you go with your gut. But one of the more important things are the timing, I think. And then you you think about stacking trends too. So like, you know, beards and then the seasoning, but yeah. barbecue started to get really hot. And then also like knowing where you're, you know, like shooting a deer, knowing how to cut it up, whatever. So we kind of stacked a few trends together. But in the, um, in the regard to like the product, whatever, there's probably, hundreds if not thousands of people that have tried the same thing or are trying the same thing. But one of the things that we learned early on was that um, we wanted to remain really authentic. And I think that's what is, um, it resonates with our audience is that we, um, we're just, we're really passionate about cooking food, meat basically, uh, you know, and um, so early on, I think it was one of like Gary Vaynerchuk or one of those said something about, you know, because obviously having smartphones or whatever, it's like you got this phone in your pocket, just start documenting what you're doing. Yeah. And get it out of your pocket, reverse the screen, point it at your face and just start showing people what you do. Yeah. yeah. And if, yeah. Yeah, if the audience is there and that the, they like it because, you know, as far as, you know, various platforms or various companies or whatever um, just a weird way that social media works is you can't 
fabricate the likes or the comments or the subscribers or whatever. You might be able to leverage some some way of gaining some, but for us, we never did that. It was always about whether it was one or a hundred thousand, whatever. This is just what we're doing, and we're just going to have fun doing it. Now, obviously, as things gain traction, we might put a little bit more focus into it, and that's with the spice. We kind of started working with different recipes and coming up with different um, different flavors. But it was really, it was just kind of one of those things that like we went with our gut, and then we just really, you know, with regard to the authenticity is we're like we're just going to do what we do and just see see where it goes so the other thing too is being raised with a military father he taught us he instilled it in us that um to sort of foresee you know down the road into the future and always, always saying you always got to be thinking about the next step always always be thinking about the next step so i think he's given he's he instilled in us the ability to decipher um, through certain situations. So we, we know who, who uh, you know, what pony to hook to our cart. We've, we've definitely had to um, kind of pick and choose as this thing has grown, who we want to get involved with and just kind of see, you know, people's intentions and where we want to take the brand and things like that. But I think it, it all boils down to that natural ability to, to be able to make decisions. Yeah, and decision you just, making comes and, into play. And you just, you just know. Yeah. And with this one, with the brand, um, it just, you know, if we had to go back and redo it, man, it would be tough. Well, that's the just thing because it just, it just, it just went like a wildfire. Somebody was yeah. asking me about this the other day and I was like, you know, when I think back, like Seth mentioned, you know, cause he's like, did you, did you guys go to school for marketing? Did you get a firm involved? And the answer is no. And I was like, you know, it starts with one, it starts with one follower, one like, one comment. But one thing that we always try to do was, um, you know, interact and like we would literally sit down with our phones and it you know it might be you know you're after dinner or whatever and and respond to messages kind of get a feel for what our audience was asking for and then try to maybe deliver some of that but um and then we just you know it we have a skill set with regard to the the butchering that we didn't realize was um i guess becoming more rare and yeah. in regard to not the fact that um like taking wild game or whatever but like with regard to multi-species knowledge of how to take you know say six or seven different animals from livestock to you know basically a commercial uh you know product yeah um which in our industry has become more consolidated so you might have one guy that does slaughter one guy that does a mid-processing step or even specific as you know one species one piece of cut you know like he might be able to break a loin from a steer but if you handed him another portion of the steer he'd do it but he wouldn't recognize anyway the point is is like we learned that like it was really and then there's a there's an odd like satisfaction like watching bob ross paint or something <laughs> when you do the fabrication it's like cutting through butter yeah just, and we had, yeah. we had, we don't watch ourselves so like we didn't know but it's just it's just like this weird thing like it's very once intriguing you start watching, and you satisfying where it goes and, yeah it's all wrapped up in one um so yeah i mean there's just come some stuff that hit off there or whatever but you know like seth mentioned um you know as our platform has grown it's still um inclusive to the family there's no um outside um presence in the sense of like any financial backing or um influence just regarding hey you guys need to do this or hey you guys need to do that so we're free to do what we want but we are starting to see some um some copycats pop up um you know replicating the logo replicating the name adding a little something to the end of the name or whatever and we'll just have to work through those as we go but um we are the a little bit of a mixture of just like you know homegrown um but we try to make sure that we do all the things on the back end to make sure that as the the brand gets we out to, there. We have to protect what we built. Yeah. Hey, so, we want to yeah. get to the tomahawks and check yeah. on those. But one yeah. more question is: Was there ever any like imposter syndrome where you guys didn't feel like you were worthy? You're like, why do we have a? Chance? Oh, we oh. still do that. Yeah. I mean, I think sometimes it's like you know, it's just maybe it's um, you just thinking about the number of subscribers that we have on YouTube, for example. 
and you know it's it's a great honor but at the same time yeah it's like you were sitting going why is so many yeah people it's, yeah. it's like and you know um we just want to be real though i mean we don't we, we that's what we want to portray yeah you know who, whoever's watching us is going to come here and visit our shop and if they run into us we we want to be the same guys they see on youtube so um just just real human beings we absolutely love what we do um tons of passion for it and the cool thing is is that throughout this whole process we've got to meet awesome dudes like you yeah, so exactly. it's like it's really i mean it's opened up these doors that we never ever imagined it's just yeah. it's just been it's been incredible yeah i'll joke with like um occasionally uh, here's an example one of the local um high school groups or whatever asked me to come speak and i was like as i, I stopped and thought about that or i try to talk about it and that's like you know when you ask a certain demographic of young people like my sons you know let's say they're 10 to 18 and i think the number one question was or is what do you want to be when you grow up it's a youtuber and i was like that's really weird like i never thought of myself as a youtuber um because when you think of youtubers you know maybe uh certain names pop into your mind or whatever but like in regard to our like, like network. Well, yeah, right. exactly. And the network that we're in, like, you know, it's like, well, we have, um, you know, a lot of subscribers, which is, which is a great honor. But yeah, it's, it's weird. I've always thought that in like, we cut meat, we don't make videos. Yeah, and like, <laughs> yeah. but we try not to like, um, ever make like a, a video just because we think it'll be clickbait yeah, or, or striving or anything for content like that anything you know like that. We just we, we would rather just wait and and capture good content than just you know try to pull yeah. something out of the air the other thing too um, that, a little bit to our fault is we won't we won't stop butchering that's yeah. like we're still like if we were mechanics we'd because still want to put all the really tires on YouTuber. yeah exactly <laughs> we really would be yeah we're just yeah. we're just butchers making youtube that's all we are yeah um if somebody has a question for us i think that'd be kind of cool we, we're probably not going to be able to get to them all Pop a question in the comments below. Um, if we get to them, we'll try to answer them. We're gonna check on these stakes, uh, and maybe we'll go in. We'll do a quick tour of the retail, yeah. um, and just kind of go from there. I but tell them, like this refresh about we're doing raffles. So yeah, we're yeah. raffling off. Go ahead. All right. So raise them outdoors. Cody Rich is here. He's a chairman. Hi guys. I'm also so, the video guy today. Buddy. Yeah. He's our our videographer. We hunted with Cody Rich in Montana. Great friends. Um, so he's on the, he's a chairman of the Raise Them Outdoors. Go to our Instagram link tree, click on in our bio. You can find Raise Them Outdoors. Go to their Instagram, uh, Cody Rich, the Rich Outdoors. You can find it there. Uh, just a great cause in getting kids into the outdoors, hunting, fishing. These guys, they go around all over the United States. They set up camps. They, they do archery. They do um, some hoping to get into some cooking just it's all about presenting kids with their first opportunity to get into the outdoors that they may have never had and that could set them up with a skill set for life yeah. so um this so this raffle that's it's going to end tonight at uh, 8 p.m eastern standard time there's some fantastic items on there um there is including one of these triggers an ironwood 80 85. Take it away. You know more about than, that than me. Okay. So anyway, guys, we got a raffle going on um, and we're raising money to help do camps across the nation, get kids involved in the outdoors. We got a couple awesome birch barrel, which we're going to do our reverse sear on over here is going to donate or is donating one of these uh, birch barrels to the raffle. So if you want to win that, you can go buy tickets for that one. You can also buy tickets for this one, the, uh, the Traeger, and we're doing some tomahawks that are looking pretty good. Man. Oh. Yeah, so as soon as we meet Temp on these, we're going to transfer them over to the birch barrel. We're going to get a nice sear. But uh, I think maybe in the meantime, we will head into the shop and give you guys a, a quick tour. And, and Cody, if you could read some questions. Yeah, um, yeah hit just, up the questions. Yeah, we'll hit up the questions. Um, we'll pick some as Cody reads them off, and we'll try to get them answered for you. So uh, come on into the shop. Uh, this, guys, the link for the raffle, you're going to have to either uh, go to the YouTube for Raise Them Outdoors, go to Bearded Butcher's Instagram, and it's in there, or my Instagram. Uh, we can't, maybe we don't know how to do the link in YouTube. So uh, it's right there. It's on Galabid, so it's galabid.com forward slash REO21. So if you go to Instagram, the beer, uh, 
Bearded Butcher Blend. Hold on, I got a shadow. There we oh, go. sorry. Go ahead. Hello. Click, click, click the link in the bio. Go to the Raise Them Outdoors. That's going to take you to the bidding page, and you can you can see right there. There's a Traeger. There's a Birch Barrel. There's all kinds of cool stuff on here. So, and just remember, this is all to get kids into the outdoors. So let's raise some money. All right, the question I just got on here was, do you think, and I'm gonna butcher this because it went away, but uh, the trimming the bone on the tomahawk, is that cheating? Cheating as in, no, so it's just presentation. So it's it, if you leave any scraps on that bone, they're gonna turn gray, they're gonna turn brown, they're gonna shrivel up, uh, and it just looks bad. So I'm not sure how it'd be cheating because it's all about presentation. If it doesn't look good, you're not gonna wanna eat it. Bottom line. Do you guys ship meat to private residents? So we don't. Um, we are currently working with a couple companies um, to get that process potentially started in the future. Um, we do have some really good recommendations. Um, one of them being our friends over at E3 Ranch. Go check them out. Um, they could hook you up with some amazing products that they'll ship online. So uh, we always recommend those guys. Uh, Secure Farms, Wagyu Beef. You can check out secure.com, E3 Ranch. You can get some really good barbecue items there. That's, those are two guys that we would, uh, two companies that we would highly recommend. Do you guys let your sausage casings dry in the fridge before smoking, I'm saying? No. So we wet our casings. It's uh, collagen, like a fibrous casing, mahogany. We, uh, we wet those and then um, we just, we use them and we hang them and we smoke them. All right, um, let's do some tour. Yeah, let's do a tour. Okay. So you are in Scott. I'm, you, I'm pay attention. Yeah, when I was looking for comments on Ben's phone, <laughs> my son. Um, so we're in um, a section of our retail store here. In 2019, we built on to the front of our store because when the previous building was not designed for retail, we had. Can we pop outside and get a quick, quick? Yeah. Let's get a quick shot of the front of the building. Okay. We're going outside, guys. Do do do. Yeah, so if you had pulled into this building three plus years ago, look a lot different than this. It was it was more or less just a um, um, Go ahead. custom build. It was very indiscreet and likely driving by, you wouldn't you wouldn't even stop here. You wouldn't have a purpose to. So we did a big addition, retail edition in 2019. Um, we were blessed that our brother-in-law's company. Um, is a commercial builder, so they did all this for us, the design work. We worked with them four months start to finish. They, um, while we worked uh, in the hub of the building and we put our retail store around the side, they built all this in four months time and we moved back in in October of 2019. And sure. it was um, very quickly, we started to find out that we would have never survived in the old space. You want me to take over on, on yeah. holding the phone? I can see your arm. Cody's arm was starting to shake a little bit. So I'm, I'm going to hold the uh, phone, and Cody will do some interview podcast style with Scott, and we'll okay. just work our way Let, through let's it. So. Give, let's, let's do one of these numbers right here. Okay. There you go. So I won't be able to see myself, but I'll just have to work my best with it. So in Hop in store, there, Cody. Okay. In our store, we've got um, the merchandising freezers. Now, we get this question. Number one, number two questions on our channel. Number one question is, um, do you ship meat? No, we do not. Um, frankly, we put in um, a, quite a bit of, of our processing power just to us keeping meat in these retail merchandisers. Somebody said it's hard to hear. So speak right up now, Speak up a little bit. Right now, the um, only way that you can purchase our meats um, is by physically walking into our retail location. Still louder? Yep. I'm shouting. <laughs> I wonder if it's because you turned the camera around. The camera bigger. Yeah. All right, maybe this is better. So, retail uh, sales only, but you walk in and obviously we're, um, from a lot of our videos, you recognize this spot. But in here is where we merchandise all of our meat. Obviously the Green Egg and the Traeger are great ways to cook the meat, so we sell both of those grills. But I wanna show you kind of where all the action happens and that uh, is an area that you'll recognize right off the bat, and that is our main processing floor. Now right here is the uh, central hub or original part of this building. It was a block building that was built sometime in the late 40s or early 50s. This is the area where 
Um, we say all the magic happens. Um, over in the corner is what you're used to. And wait, I want to I want to go over the saw too. Uh, yeah, Cody and I were in here and we talked about this last night. Dude, this thing is so cool. Like, I feel it's, like this is... This is my favorite piece of butchering equipment. This is amazing. Period. It, it, tell us how old it is. Uh, frankly, I don't know. I, this, it's got, it's got to be 50, 60 years old. Yeah. yeah. It's a Butcher Boy B16. Maybe, maybe somebody out there knows. Throw a comment down because yeah, we'd maybe, like to know. Yeah, uh, we can send them the server. But this saw, the really weird thing is, is like, just the... the the working around this area. Go ahead and swing your hips a little bit. That's, that doesn't ever let me around, around the saw because I'm afraid that, like, you know, the backup quarterback comes in and then you don't get your job back. <laughs> I've, uh, I've swung my hips. That's been my dancing partner for, like, 20-some years. So when we break, we come off the, the, the low rail out of the cooler, and, um, you know, basically our heavy lifting is taken and break the animal from a uh, side down to a... Uh, two quarters comes out on the lower rail and then we just Seth breaks off this rail cuts go one direction and um and the uh meats that are fabricated for ground meat go in a, in Seth, a separate how direction. many hours do you have on this on this machine so literally <laughs> um i started on this saw when i was 18 came in here on a monday morning the meat cutter had quit over the weekend so i started when i was 18 i'm 41 now so what's that 23 years 23 put do let's do the math don't How count many hours don't, a week do you think? Four, 50 hours a week Ugh. so we we did some math. cody's okay. cody's gonna Go do ahead. the math well we yeah. did some we did some um conservative estimates because for a 20-year block of time we did custom harvest where fifty nine thousand eight hundred hours yeah sixty thousand hours you heard so, it that's yeah. a lot of hip swinging on that saw the bearings have all been replaced in the saw. what about what about my bearings? right <laughs> so we replace the bearings in the top pulley and the bottom bullet hey. pulley and obviously the blade gets switched i off. can still throw down a good line dance <laughs> but um not true as far as repetition and whatever so we did custom butcher for 20 oh, let's just take a 20 year block so on average, um, we would do about um, 500 cattle and Butch. 750 pigs every year. That's Butch. just cattle and pigs. So before I lose it, Butcher Boy has been around since 1955. Okay. Oh wow! So this that's is an early model. Then. Yeah, we think so. And like I said, the uh, butchering in this building, this block building, was built sometime in the 50s. So it was probably pretty new when it was. Where's, where's the serial number? Someone will look it up for us. They probably will. What's um, this one part on the front that? front panel. Okay, someone look at this up. Okay, so you ready? You ready for a serial number? It's gonna be six six dash eight zero four one dash eight zero four one. So six dash eight zero four one. Okay, hopefully someone can look it up. That'd hey. be awesome. I, I want to know. I want to yeah. know how all this thing is. I just think this is the coolest piece of equipment. They have some amazing equipment in here, and the new packaging stuff is insane. But like. I came, we came in last night and I was like, this is the coolest thing. Well, here. even like, just it's like, so, it just, so much sits, it just sits here and just with the butcher boy down the oh, yeah. side, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely a relic. So, um, but yeah, just the nature of the business, you know, it can wear you down, but repetition, repetition, repetition. That's why when it comes through on the YouTube videos, you know, being able to break a whole carcass because, you know, if you take and you look at the, the cattle and just the pigs alone, we estimate that we've been involved in the, the, the from livestock to finish of something like 10,000 cattle and, and, and 15,000 pigs. So if you do that on, a, you know, the muscle memory and everything is there. Um, but and so we went, sure we went hunting this year and unfortunately we didn't get a kill an elk, but Scott and I were going to race and see who could break down an elk faster. I'm pretty sure he was going to beat me, but I still think I... <laughs> I think it'd be close. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I mean, there's hey, there, there there's going to be an opportunity someday. Well, I feel absolutely. Like there will be. I also feel like uh, if we're in grizzly country, I might be. Uh, yes, <laughs> I think that's probably. We were when we went hunting, we were terrified of bears, and um, so initially we went to a spot and there weren't weren't any bears to worry about. And then the second spot, it was like everywhere there was like. If you were near a trailhead, it was a sign like there's going to be bears, and they're like, "Well, <laughs> we should probably like hang our food and things like that." So 
we were we were like how how you know in Cody said, well, they don't really, well, they're not supposed to attack you at night, but recently <laughs> one did, so they kind of broke, the bear kind of broke the rules, but anyway. After I told them that, they were very scared of being in the dark. <laughs> yeah, we won't lie. Uh, I want to talk, hold on, I want to talk yeah. about uh, meat quality, and so something that, like, raise them outdoors, uh, one of the things, we get kids into the outdoors. Somebody just asked for the link again, so maybe okay. we should throw it's that out there. It's going to be galabid, G-A-L-A-B-I-D dot com forward slash reo21 so galabid.com forward slash reo21 that's going to be linked to the auction if you guys want to go to our website it's raise them outdoors raise em outdoors.com that's you can find out all about our organization what we do our camps what states we have camps in all that good stuff but by and large we're here to help kids get in the outdoors uh, we feel like it's kind of been lost in the generations and there's so many kids that just don't have the ability to get outside to learn how to fish, learn how to hunt, learn where their meat comes from. And actually, we were talking, Seth and I were talking, um, we should do a bearded butcher's version of the camp where we do some hunting or some archery, some fishing, and maybe some meat processing. Because, like we were talking about, kids, most people, human, I mean, a lot of people my age, our age, don't know how to process their own meat, how to take it from an animal that they've just harvested to making some awesome summer sausage or breakfast sausage or whatever it is. So we're actually talking about doing that. Maybe we'll, uh, if you guys are interested, maybe we'll do uh, an Ohio camp where people learn to butcher. Uh, I think we'd have more parents sign up for the camp than kids and drag their kids along. But uh, that's, that's what we do. And, you know, we try to get kids to experience what it's like to, to harvest their own food, uh, to be aware of where their food comes from and those type of things. So whether it's you know, you guys butchering, uh, you know, grass-fed beef and, and, and bison, just understanding the quality of food. And I think that's what people are interested in these days. It's like, I want to know where my food comes from. You know, even if I buy it from you guys, like, I know that's, I can trust the, the bearded butcher's stamp of approval that it's like, hey, that's a good quality piece of meat. So kind of talk about, you know, quality of meat and how important that is to you guys as a butcher shop. Absolutely. So, Paramount, do, you think, do you think we'll get service just in the inside the cooler? Just make it. Why don't we pop in there just real quick? These folks would probably like to see hanging beef, and then we'll pop back out here on the I think floor. We can maybe just make a loop and go out the other door. Yeah. We won't lose them. So, Paramount, you have to talk. It's paramount to our existence that we know everything about the meats that we source, and like Cody mentioned. We're gonna lose service, we gotta go back out here. One of the ways that you, you know, so the, the connection to the outdoors um, is that you, you know, harvest something that you basically found free range, growing wild, right? So essentially organic. Um, with regard to our sourcing, you know, we work closely with um, area farms. If we didn't raise it ourselves like the bison, um, we've got a small network of area farms that we source from exclusively and so we know exactly where it came from, how it was handled. But what happens is like, you know, and when it comes to protein, um, literally every cell in your body needs protein. So like when you start talking about the fundamental makeup of us, um, the best fuel sources available, you, there's, you know, that saying you are what you eat, but you are what you eat eats too. So like when we have these sources um there is a difference like joe rogan will even talk about this like when you know when you eat meat like you, you may you may be a tiny bit like a little bit more like aggressive because you're just like i gotta kill it i gotta eat it like yeah. and that's a little bit of our fabric too but then like when you do eat like these really clean source meats you feel different yeah. so you're gonna you're gonna have like this great energy resource and you're just gonna be um essentially a different human being or maybe possibly the the best version of yourself that you could be so meat quality you know begins with the actual livestock itself whether it's free range whether it's um, farm raised and then once you take that animal from harvest to you know whatever the process is until it gets to your plate um, there's a lot that can affect the quality so with regard to harvest, um, you know, obviously clean shots, uh, you know, marksmanship, for example, something that yeah. is taught in the camps 
something maybe I mean I remember my my grandfather teaching me um, you know how to set up you know the the front sight and you know look through your sights on a target I think he probably learned that in military yeah but these are just important fundamental things because when you actually do squeeze the trigger or we take a you know on the commercial side when we when we harvest an animal um, that affects meat quality um, you know if there's uh, you know a lot of holes pumped in this thing the adrenaline is flowing um, it's going to impact it but then what happens is then you know the next step is the, the meat uh, you know cleanliness so every animal comes with a hide wrapped around it and um, you know a bunch of hair and things like that so obviously you're going to try to get get that carcass as clean as possible and then it's pretty much about time temperature from that point on because the, the nature is it's going to be breaking down now yeah. with dry aging we just slow that process to s super slow finite process that we control and and we are actually able to get a little bit better product in the end um, would you say that like quality of an animal's life is changes the taste of that animal once it comes off the ground oh absolutely so one of the things about being in the custom butchering business for so long is we saw a huge variety of animals that we had nothing to do with their care and how they were raised. They were just simply presented to us at our back door and um, we hated it when we received an animal that somebody hadn't put the proper care into raising because the quality um, so obviously taste too, but the quality, even for just a, from a butcher perspective, from a tell. butcher perspective, wow. yep, um, you're immediately going to be able to tell that the meat's tougher, it's slimy, it's uh, it's it's you know if something's malnourished, it's just not going to have That's crazy really anything to pass that. along. Yeah, dairy cows are probably the worst. I mean, a dairy cow spends its whole life producing nutritious milk. None of that's going into its bones and yeah. muscle, and then you butcher it. You're just going to have some crappy, slimy, yeah. you know, used up. Um, uh, what the heck's the anyway? The technical term for um, for basically starvation. We've seen animals that way. They're essentially like the muscles eating itself and the oh, you know, whatever. Okay. So, and two, like when you harvest an animal, occasionally something in the in the wild, maybe it was hit by a car, shot or whatever. Um, you can recognize that, and you're like, "Boom! I can't eat it or whatever." Yeah. Um, but yeah, the. And we talked too about a little bit about like, um, yes, sir. <clears throat> Just a real quick intermission. Somebody commented and said we should probably go check the steaks, which I agree. <laughs> We're about 50 minutes in. Well, um, and, and you we have can, my phone. I can just yeah. look, on my, look on my phone. Hey, we have a Traeger app. Um, the other thing is, Cody, if you could hold this for a second because yeah. I need to go round up a phone charger because oh. my phone just barked at me. So I don't want a, a dead battery. So okay. All right, Scott, we're on. How's our steaks looking? You're on camera. We're checking steaks. They're getting, they're getting close. Let's go check them. They're at 80 degrees. We're going to go check. This is a very serious thing. You can't screw up tomahawks. I feel like no. that's it's, it's dangerous. Okay. What are they at? 80 degrees. 80 degrees. What are they going to Internal. Need so we're going to go about 110, um, okay. 120. They're so not going to take long to reverse here. So on tell there. me a little bit about the ironwood and how we're going through the process. Why the ironwood is so great? Yep. So meat over a wood fire. I'll say it again, meat over a wood fire. That's what we preach because we feel like you get the best quality, the best flavor when you're cooking meat over a wood fire. That's low tech stuff. It's been around for millennia. So what Traeger has done is just married high tech to that low tech. So we literally have pellets, wood pellets, that are just simply pressed hardwoods. There's no additives, just the simple moisture and sugars in the wood hold the pellet together. And what this is doing is it's using the high tech, i.e. Uh, a small computer to drive pellets um, along an auger and it delivers them to a fire pot, which is just a basically a hot rod with a um, fan blowing on it. and there's a variable speed motor blowing the fan. So we're able to actually turn this, you know, this low tech wood fire into a high tech system that cooks meat perfectly with wood. 
every single time. So with the Traeger, we're able to take and set our temperature as low as 165 or as hot as 500, and it's gonna be within five degrees, and it's all done with simply wood as the fuel source. Um, so you're gonna get this awesome flavor. You're gonna get this great wood-fired flavor um, on perfect, because if you do this over um, you know, a campfire, it's gonna be a lot harder to control your heat. So it's basically just taking that wood fire, putting it in a box and giving you, delivering you great wood fired food every time you use it. Okay, what's, birch, your, what's your thought on the, the letter Kenny method of cooking steaks? Was it salt, pepper, one minute each side, flip, and that's Well, first it. thing we would do is throw out the salt and pepper. <laughs> <laughs> We're a spice company, Cody. <laughs> I love, and then want you to argue this. So yeah. what my point is like cooking it fast and hot versus this way. I think people are concerned that we're overcooking these. Well, see, on. you have to look at the thickness of these steaks. So you have to look at the thickness, and you, if you cook these fast and hot without doing a reverse sear, so the low and slow actually brings the internal temperature of the steak up, and then you put it on your, your sear, which cooks the outside. So if you just did fast and hot without that first initial slow process, you would have a steak that's burnt on the outside and raw on the inside. So my argument there is, don't abuse your meat. That's a good motto to live by. <laughs> it it doesn't like to be, like Seth said, I'm gonna have to keep it NSFW here, but thrown around, placed on, you know, like we always talk about this with meat in regard to the temperatures that if you have these knee jerk situations where, you know, you have something frozen, I know there's methods where you can cook meat frozen, I've done it myself. But I like to treat it with, it's gonna, this is gonna sound complete like, like tree hugger stuff, but like with respect throughout the entire process. Because if you do that, and, and I'm talking like even like the harvest of the animal and like, you're, it's, it's, it's a great thing to have meat. Like it's one of the things that is, you know, like say for example, if you visited my house 150 years ago, I wasn't giving you a salad. I wasn't going out to get the cabbage that had in my you know basement from whatever. It was how can I give you you know make a roast or something like that. Like meat is an incredible resource. So when we talk about cooking or whatever, I just don't like doing like uh, steak for like this for example. Like Seth said, it's so thick. We're just gonna kind of, we're just gonna have a long, slow process here with this of raising that internal temperature slowly, and then we do want that sear on the outside because that's that's great flavor and it locks in all those juices. But with regard to the um, the harvest, the process, and you know, I was gonna get into this and I'll circle back to it. Um, we'll circle back. Um, <laughs> We, um, we knew we were going to go there. Yeah, I knew it was going to go there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so the... <laughs> we'll circle back. Circle the, back. The, the meat, um, the process of, of even like caring for your packages, like when you put them in your freezer or whatever, if you're kicking the stuff around the bottom of your freezer and then it's not vacuum sealed and, and it just, it's going to... Meat in a freezer is, um, it's inherently safe, like freezer burn does not affect the quality of meat. It only affects the flavor. And what happens is it's a very low humidity uh, um, environment your freezer is, so it dehydrates it. So if your package is broken and your meat in your freezer turns white, it's just super dehydrated and it's gonna taste like crap. My point is, is like when we shoot a deer or whatever, like we carefully package it and like get stacked in the freezer and like, oh, you know, out comes the package or whatever. And um, you know, with the exception of llamas carrying your pat, your your bear patties. But anyway, I'm just I'm making an inside joke here. Go watch the video, the, the elk hunting video. The meat that we we always we always try to be careful, careful, cautious, and treat it with reverence throughout the whole process. And I think that has a lot to do with the with the end result, the flavor, and the animal too. So I was gonna I'll touch on this now. So we talk about um, you know whatever agenda that that's being pushed as far as meat. meat. Um, and we're aware of it, just like, for example, the milk industry was um, has lost about 
of their revenue that they'll never gain back to alternatives. Now these came out in the 80s. Well, the milk campaign, milk was campaigning very well through the 80s with Olympic uh, athletes and things like that. You remember the milk mustaches? Well, alternatives came out like soy and things like that, and it, it kind of blindsided the milk industry. Well, the same things happened in the meat industry. We've got alternatives to meat. Um, and, and you know, if you look at it from an ethical standpoint, you know, animals that are raised for food, um, you know, I, I, I guess an argument can be made that like, you know, whether you're using some sort of breeding process to actually produce the animal. But my point is the actual, um, you know, the slaughter of the animal, the, the options for an animal um, to perish are actually, slaughter is the most humane way that an animal can be, um, you know, basically taken. converted to food or taken, yes. So predation, predation um, if nature is metal, it, it's not gonna go well. Like you're gonna get drugged down by wolves or, um, you know, chewed on from the back to the front, whatever, you're gonna have a slow, painful death. Um, old age, it's not a realistic um, end for, for you know, ex exception of maybe a pet, which, um, you know, animals in the wild, like they're, they're likely gonna starve when it yeah. comes to old age. Well, when, teeth, they run the out of teeth. teeth. Yep, the teeth are gonna be gone, they can't chew anymore, or, you know, the winter, um, I don't know what winter kill is, like maybe in your part of the world, but it's probably pretty big. Uh, it's generally boiled down to like starvation. Or yeah, exactly, or starving to death. Um, so I guess my point is that like with our uh, approach to meat and regarding um, the life of the animal, it's like, you know, we understand that, that we're raising animals for a purpose of food, but that particular, um, you know, event, slaughter event is done in a um, absolute reverent or otherwise humane manner so that we get, and I think that has to do with the care of the, um, or the quality of the, the product too. Um, there, I, I don't know the, all the technical side of it or the, the science behind it, but there's hormones that are released um, when an animal is, you know, under undue stress that are going to affect meat quality. Yeah, that's right. I think it's time for some comments. Okay, I'm going to do some comments. What questions do you have for the Bearded Butchers and Cody Rich? We'd love to answer some questions. Get those comments flowing. We won't be able to get to them all. But uh, Cody, if you could grab a few, we will- Yeah, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna grab some comments, but yeah. just to kind of touch base, anyone who's just showing up, wait, are there plans? Uh, anyway, who's just showing up, we are doing a raffle for Raise Them Outdoors, nonprofit that helps kids get involved in the outdoors. And we are raffling off this beautiful Traeger, a beautiful Traeger, brand new one, not this one. Uh, and it's actually gonna come with a six pack of seasoning as well from these boys. So we got one of those with a six pack of seasoning and we're also gonna do, Seth, you're in the way. Nope, oh, sorry. We're gonna do a birch barrel as well. So if you guys wanna buy tickets to win one of these, help support a good cause, go to galabid, G-A-L-A-B-I-D.com forward slash R-E-O 21. And someone asks, oh no, that's probably, for plans for shipping meat. No, uh, can't address that so, one, but they are gonna cover shipping on the Traeger if you win. The well, I, Which, I'll address that one, shipping meat. Okay, yeah. so one of the big it's challenges. It's coming up a lot. It yeah. is coming up a lot. That's our so, number one question is, do you ship meat? Yeah, so there's obviously um, a, a, a big logistical thing that needs to happen if you ship meat. Um, time, temperature, meat needs to be kept. And there's companies that do it well. So what we're working is nailing down the right partner, and we think we have it narrowed down to a partner that can um, provide basically um, everything in our store in the regard of the grass-fed beef, the, the even like the seafoods that we have, the pork. Um, and then we have another partner that we're working on for like the, the prime or the grain finished cattle um, because we obviously do like the 100% grass-fed and then we do the, the, the all natural grain fed. And then another partner, um, which we've already linked in the past that does the, the Wagyu. So we pretty much have um, Which the, it is pronounced Wagyu, by the way, because all you have to do is search it on the internet, and they actually pronounce it for you. So a lot of people, it's they more like guttural, like yeah. Wagyu, but I wasn't gonna do that on the video. <laughs> so technically, it's not Wagyu, it's Wagyu. Wagyu. Just to clear that it means up, Japanese yeah. cow. Yeah. But um, we're very close to revealing the the partners that we have, providing links, things like that. So. Um, and, and essentially, we'll be able to put our stamp of approval on it, and you can get meat just like if you were walking into our store and purchasing it there. So we we hope to have that um, 
all the logistics put together for that very soon. And of course, you'll hear about it when we. So do. they also asked about shipping seasonings. So you guys ship ship the seasoning. Right? Absolutely, Absolutely. beardbutchers.com. You're gonna find um, all the spice blends, the sauce, as well as a lot of our grilling tools that we know and love. We're putting up there too. Um, you ship to Africa. Can you? Yep. yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, if you go to our our website beardbutchers.com, there's there's actually a lot to dive into there. We've got a uh, a section called the butcher's block. We do um, a, a bunch of blog posting, just everything related to cooking, grilling, outdoors, hunting, different stuff you need, equipment, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's all there. The and other you thing, can spend quite a bit of time there. The other thing too, some people forget the amount of videos that we have on our YouTube channel. So if you have a question about how to do something, maybe go back through, search the videos, because there's potential that we posted it maybe a few years back. Um, so if you're wondering, there's there's possibility that we already have a video for it. It's just further down in the queue. So I want to hit one. One one person asked, "What's the best way to cook a prime rib for Easter?" Well, well it depends one of these on... grills that we have. <laughs> <laughs> one of my so it, it's likely you know, unless you have um, you know an outdoor smoker or whatever, uh, oven's probably going to come into play. One of my favorite methods is where you. Um, You'll turn your oven up to 450. You'll put the, the price, and, and you can search this on online because I won't have all the parameters just right, you know, right off the top of my head. But um, you put your prime rib in the oven for I think it's like 450 for like five degree or five minutes, and then uh, based on the weight of it, you just uh, turn your oven off and you leave it in there for a certain number of hours. I've done that personally before I had any of the outdoor cooking methods, and it was fantastic. So. That's that's one method that may be more universal. Um, obviously, if you have a, a Traeger or any pellet smoker, most of them, uh, most manufacturers put out recipes. That's a great way to do it. Um, uh, Komodo style, like the Big Green Egg or even the Birch. Um, nearly every one of these manufacturers has a particular recipe, but um, someone my favorite, just- My favorite one is, oh, do you wanna hit on that one? No, first? go ahead. I was gonna say my favorite recipe for the prime rib is to cover it in salt. Um, so you put it in a tray, cover it in rock salt, and it goes in the oven for, it's 500 degrees. And I think it's like five minutes per pound or something. It's pretty mm -hmm. quick, but it has a super salty, just delicious. It's a nice, nice crunch, crunch on the crunch. Yeah. 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 Somebody asked if Traeger's ship, um, their question was shipped to Kenya. So both of these manufacturers that we're featuring here today, the Traeger and the Birch Barrel, they do ship. So go to their website, see how far they ship. That we can't guarantee. Um, check them out there, TraegerGrills.com, BirchBarrel.com, and you can see if they uh, if they ship to your part of the country. We Hopefully are... they don't ship through the Suez Canal. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, there's a boat launch lock there right Locked now. In there. Yeah. So uh, five degrees to go until we hit internal temp on these awesome tomahawks, and then from there we're going to go to the Birch Barrel. Um, it's time for a few more questions. Something you want to know about the bearded butchers? Throw it in the comments. Uh, someone asked about boning knives when they're back in stock. They, they are, are back in stock. They are back yes, in stock. Yes, our okay. favorite Victorinox six-inch boning knife is on the website and it is in stock. Another so. question that came up was the ostrich. Is there a video of you guys' ostrich butchering? No. So Why is that our thing? We need an ostrich. <laughs> <laughs> there, I, there's some photos. Yeah. Um, I think maybe in our history video, I think there was a photo in there. There was one blip. But um, so we will or can butcher an ostrich when we find one. We actually went to an exotic auction um, looking for an ostrich not too long ago, and we were unsuccessful. But um, How excited are you to butcher another ostrich? I, I don't <laughs> want to, not um, at all. Yeah, the, 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 you get around the animals and they're, they're really dumb. Like I know that's like, everybody knows that ostriches bury their, bury their head in their sand or whatever, but they're just, really hard to work with because like they they have this periscope up here so they don't see you know like what like really what's in front of them or which direction they need to go they just try to follow their head and you know they're made for the serengeti or whatever so when you get them in these confined spaces you, you have to kind of get behind them and like guide them where they need to go and they'll peck everything yeah so if you're wearing a, a wrist watch or a wedding ring or anything like that they, they'll, try to, they'll try to peck it right off your body but then so, um, they're covered in feathers with the quill is like the size of a pencil and you have to pull them out. Oh, do you have to pluck, is it plucking them? Pluck, yeah. You have to pluck them, then skin them. So you, oh. so you don't, so so you don't scald like, them. You don't scald them like you do you know, a chicken or a turkey. Yeah. 
and then pluck them. You just you just pluck them. So it's real hard on your fingers. It's like plucking out fence wire. Yeah, I mean, yeah. think of it and as, and as doing them. you know a, a huge turkey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And but they they have like the average weight of like the males dressed is like what like 150 to to 175 pounds, good size. like a carcass. Yeah. After it's, so the bones are they're a bird, although they're flightless. Their bones are like almost weightless. Oh, if you really? cut them open, they don't have marrow in them. It's more of like a honeycomb um, material inside the bones. So, so once you do, super super light. Once you do get them butchered, you get like an incredible yield off of them. It's almost all I, meat. I, I I don't know if I would call it an incredible eating experience though. No, <laughs> they're yeah, okay. They're, they're very, it's a red meat, so they're okay. There's really no fat. Mm -hmm. It's um it's very rich. It's uh it's kind of a livery taste, and you know they're it's almost meat's almost purple. Yeah, and they're they they're a rat type. So when we when it came to slaughter for the USDA, we had to get uh, uh, you have to have sort of a different uh, certification for every species that you do. Ah, so sense. they fall under a rat type, which this is a really bizarre thing. Okay. This means nothing to anybody besides us, but he's just going to keep talking, and our steaks are going to overcook. Are they? Are they ready? They're ready. Go, go ahead. You I go ahead. Stop talking. No, you finish. Well, I was just we'll... going to say how you stupid it is. Yeah. <laughs> so bison. Okay, we're cooking bison. Bison's our national mammal. Okay. Did you know that, Cody? I did not. Yeah. It's our national mammal. Now, the USDA, in their infinite wisdom, still classifies bison as an exotic. Really. However, ostrich. I don't know, it was leverage from the, the, the ostrich industry or a lobbyist or something. They were successful in getting ostrich taken off of the exotic list and put under the um, what they call mandatory inspection. So something that falls under mandatory inspection, the, the USDA covers under their inspection act. Yeah. Um, in other words, if it's commercially processed for food in the United States, the, the establishment doesn't pay for the inspection, the taxpayer does. Basically, part of the Inspection Act was the, the government sends an inspector here as a mandatory step to make sure that the food arrives to the consumer safe. So they gave ostrich that qualification, but they, they've kept it from bison. So if you're watching this, some congressman or woman somewhere, why are our bison still classified as an exotic that we as the, as the industry uh, processor have to pay so we now have to pay for the inspection of the bison. It's not it's not a mandatory free service that, that the pet taxpayer. We personally have we, we tell our inspector we're we're slaughtering bison, and then they they actually charge you for an exotic um, fee while you're harvesting. So before you complain about the prices of bison, keep that in talk mind. Talk to your congressman. Talk to your congressman or woman because why are we classifying bison as an exotic when it's the only native vote of bovine to this to this continent? All right. There you go. Off the soapbox. Let's eat some steak. Time to finish some steak. Throw some comments in. We'll try to get to a few. We've met temp of 110 degrees. Is that smoke rolling out of there? You could own a Traeger Ironwood 885 through the benefit that Cody Rich is doing with Raise Them Outdoors. We've said that, we've uh, commented the link a couple times. If you didn't hear it, go to our Instagram, Bearded Butcher Blend, go to the link. It's in Linktree, click the first one, raise them outdoors, go to the gala bid, you know the rest. Enter the raffle, we can ship one of these okay, to whoever it is. So the raffle's open now, and it ends at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so what go. Date? What's the date today? 27th so <laughs> March 27th yes we need to mention the date in this video because if somebody watches it later after we make it uh, public and, and on our channel um, that after this date the the raffle will in fact be over but today is March 27th 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time it is still going on so pop over there help support these kids let's get uh, children into the outdoors okay you're gonna ruin the time on all right quit talking we do love to talk we've been known for that so Scott just lifted the lid on the birch barrel. So tripod design. We have hard lump charcoal, rockwood. We love rockwood charcoal. We have um, the grill is filled with hard lump charcoal. It's sitting at about 700 degrees right now. So birchbarrel.com, very cool tripod design. You can use it as a grill. You can grill, smoke, bake, all kinds of cool stuff with it. And then at the end of the night, you can gather around it. You can uh, 
entertain your friends and family with a campfire in this unit. So Scott's gonna get the grate brushed off. We're gonna finish these steaks. We're gonna take them to temp, which is gonna be about 125 to 130 degrees. Let them rest, slice them, and see what we got. You ready for me? Yep. I'm thankful we did all those YouTube videos, one take, no, uh, you know, no edits, which generally speaking, our, our, our videos are pretty much, I mean, they're edited just for time, but they're not, we don't do a lot of retakes. Man, listen to that sizzle. I can grab some foil. Foil? Yeah, I can grab some foil. Just snap it. So, I just told Scott that we're gonna grab a little, a little bit of foil. We're gonna wrap these bones with some foil to uh, protect those bones from charring. So I guess that's something I should have done prior, but I got a little bit too excited because the, the smell of these steaks is just There's phenomenal. no take two, no take two. No take two on something like this. So how long does it take to bring back up the tent on your steering? We're gonna be just a few minutes per side. How big of a sheet? So someone asked if they came into the shop, what chunk of meat would you recommend to them? Oh. Any chunk? <laughs> um, we usually try to find out a little bit more information about somebody like our kids involved, all this other stuff. But um, with regard, I mean, for me, like a bison filet is the top of the line. Like you just, it does not get any better than that. Um, if you, if you're just wanting something to like uh, taste our seasoning, we do boneless, skinless chicken thighs with the, the original on it. That's like one of our OGs. Uh, my family usually revolves like different meals and that's one that we always go back to. It's like the kids all eat it and everything like that. But we typically, if you're coming into our shop and you want top of the line, a bison filet or one of those porterhouse or one of these tomahawks, that's that's it for me. Uh, I always choose bison. If you really want just like just a nice buttery flavor, you could go for your uh, for your wagyu. Um, super rich, it's like eating velvet cake. It's just amazing. Um, but we have a bunch of different choices. We usually try to find out what's specific. So when uh, how is someone asked this? And it's a great question. Uh, how is bison fat when you eat it compared to like beef fat versus other fats? Is it more of a beef or just like it melts in your mouth? Or? Yep, so it's more of a sweet. Um, we, we, we kind of find that it's, it's a little bit more sweet than, um, than your typical beef. So beef has more of a butter flavor, bison has more of a sweet flavor. How's this going, Seth? We're done. And that's it. Oh, got a nice bark on him there. That was probably four minutes. Maybe, maybe two minutes aside, we hit temp of about 125 and I certainly do not want to overcook these. So now we're just gonna let them rest for maybe 10 minutes, five, five, 10 minutes, and then we'll slice them. All right. Tell us a little bit about the Burks barrel here, Scott. So one of the things, like I said, meat over a wood fire, we understand that with regard to the Traeger, um, I'll, Sometimes I'll use analogies like it's vehicles or whatever like that. That's electric, so it's gonna be have, have to have an electric source. This birch barrel is really utilizing that old technology of just more or less like a campfire, um, but with some features built in that allow you to control temperature. Um, one of the things being this, this handle system, because what you could do, you saw those stakes in there, is um, I've just lowered this handle and I actually locked it. But at this point, I can lift this up, and now if it, it took my grate with it, so I could leave something. We did this on our bison versus beef video. We just left something up here smoking. We did it with our goat video where we actually hung the hindquarters from it. So it has a bunch of different uh, features built into it, proprietary features that allow you to take um, almost what you would have out of a out of a campfire but a whole bunch of functionality so essentially probably the easiest way to say it is i'm building a campfire suspended in this tripod and then i'm able to man manipulate my temperature of my campfire and i'm able to raise or lower my product accordingly so that i can get 
all the versatility out of, uh, of a smoker grill with a campfire. And then Does you that make it. sense? Yeah. Uh, one of the things I like about it is uh, the fact that you can have a campfire afterwards. You can have it hang out. Great point. So once your food's done cooking, you can lift everything up out of here. Um, it's a great resource for, you know, on, on patios, sometimes you have those propane heaters. Throw some wood in here. You yeah. got a nice place to gather around. Nobody ever wants to gather around a microwave, so remember that. <laughs> you want me to take over for a little bit? Sure. You okay, I got that. So okay. Cody's arm's probably getting a little shaky. Yeah. Since he is the guest from Bozeman, Montana, I thought it would be best if he got served first. Oh, yeah. So Cody's gonna get served first. Maybe Scott, you wanna do the honors of the slicing? I will, but I'm not gonna do it just yet. No, we've got a few more it's minutes. Gotta rest for uh, at least another couple of minutes. Don't we insult the meat, as Seth would say. Exactly. Don't abuse your meat. Don't abuse your meat. <laughs> so, Cody. Yes. Tell us about your podcast. Oh, I, yeah. I feel like people should know. Tell yeah. us, tell, tell people about your subscription based box that. Oh, no. No, yes. we're not getting into that stuff. Okay. No, we're not, like, this is for Raise them. Let's okay. do for Raise them stuff. But, okay, yeah. well, let's give us a reminder what this okay. is about. So, this, all this stuff, guys, I uh, want a big thank you to everyone who has joined the raffle. I hope you guys win. But uh, I'm with Raise them Outdoors today, and we are a nonprofit across the nation that gets kids involved in the outdoors teaches them about hunting, fishing, where their food comes from, where their meat comes from, all those things. Just introducing kids to, to something that, you know, changed my life. Change, like Seth and Scott, same thing, you know, it changed our life. Absolutely. Has made us appreciate even this beef, right? Or this, this bison, beef, whatever it may be. And, you know, we appreciate where our meat comes from and just the outdoors in general. I mean, it's changed my life. I know that's a lot of the, the founder of Raise Them Outdoors that changed her life. And so that's what we want to give back to all these kids that don't necessarily have that. So what we're doing today is we're raising money to help put on camps across the country, get kids involved, get them outside, teach them what it is to, you know, shoot a little bow, what it is to go fishing, catch their first fish and all of those cool things. So. We really appreciate you guys donating and 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 buying raffle tickets. So we're gonna raffle off the birch barrel that you guys just saw. We're gonna raffle off a Traeger as well. And there's also an auction. You guys can buy some bearded butcher seasonings. There's all kinds of stuff in there too. We got Garmin's, we got Binos, we got all kinds of really cool stuff. If you guys wanna go check it out, it's galabid.com forward slash REO21. Huge thanks to the guys at Bearded Butchers for helping us out and to you guys, the audience, for really just being here and, and being supportive of anything they support. So I want to thank, you know, Bearded Butchers and you guys as well. Um, thank you for, for helping out. But that's what we're about and we're trying to donate. If you guys want to check out more about the nonprofit, you can check that out at Raisem, R-A-I-S-E-E-M, outdoors.com. And you can see more about our camps, what states we have. Uh, we have Texas camps coming up. We have Oregon camps coming up. Uh, we're hoping to get a camp in Ohio with these two. Um, and we have camps all over. So go check it out. Um, it's a great organization and getting kids in, in the outdoors. That's what's important. That's the most important thing is that next generation, getting those kids into the outdoors. And that's what this is all about. I'm going to swing around here. Let's get the, uh, the sun is starting to go down just a little bit in the west. So I think we're going to have really good lighting. And um, these steaks have been resting. I, I cannot believe that Seth is actually letting me use a knife. Do the <laughs> yeah, use a knife. Do the cutting. Um, Seth, what if I totally screw this? Can up? we move back just a little bit? Because I'm actually having trouble seeing the over maybe over there. Shadow? Yeah, let's move back can just a little bit. Can you see? Okay, can you see better in the in the darkness? There, let me let me go over here. Okay, there I can see. Okay. All right. Yes, no. Do you want you want to just move in? Let's just move it inside. Okay. I'm having trouble with the sun, so we're going to move it inside the building. Ah, ha, ha. It's cooler in here, too. Is that better for you? Is the lighting a little bit better? <laughs> what if I just, just, I just drop I, it? I, I don't obey any of his commands. There we go. Look at that. So we wanted to show you how to cook tomahawk steaks. And I think we've achieved that. Now we're gonna find out if that is true. Cody being our guest. <laughs> I'm gonna see you something completely absurd and, and freak <laughs> yeah. Seth out. No, seriously, get in on this. I'm gonna slice, slice these bones off and, and set those aside. So I'm gonna get this bone off of here. Put that down there. Which we're gonna gnaw on that here in a little bit. Don't you worry. 
Or if Charlie's out here, he's going to take care of it for us. <laughs> So the cap, the cap is actually one of my favorite pieces. This, this piece right off of here, but I want to get right down into the center of this thing too. And the other thing you'll notice about bison is the fat is a little bit more yellow. It's probably uh, something to do with a little bit different mineral content. I don't know about you guys, I'm pretty sure the cook nailed the, nailed that one. That looks super. So 125 degrees is where that went to, and you're gonna get a nice, rare um, center. If you wanna to go more to, towards a medium, just go to about 130, 135. I'm gonna cross section some of this so we can get a... Samples? Good, good hunk. The kids start showing up. How did that I happen? know, yeah. right? Hey, can they you grab a six pack the over there and a four pack? All right, guys, grab a bite. Okay. I want this cat piece, look at that. Oh. <laughs> That's so good. How'd we that, do? That bite is why we, why mm. we do this. It's That's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Mm. That, that mm. flavor. And it's always so tender when you, when you deal with bison. So you know, that sweet flavor that it has. Yeah. Be okay. honest, Cody. Is it better than elk? No. <laughs> High-end steakhouse all over the world. I'd take this. Come in I'd here, take boys. This over a high-end steakhouse. That's not scripted. That's the yeah. honest truth. Grab yourself oh, a piece. Man. That's so good. See that fat right there? We're just gonna hammer down. Oh. Mm. That is delicious. Somebody said it's so hard to watch. <laughs> we don't mean we don't mean to do this to you guys. You should taste it. It's even yeah. worse. Here, taste that with the fat. See if you can pick off any of that. It's more like a wild game fat, but not like. I was, I was just gonna say. I feel like it's more like a wild game fat, but it has like. But it's the, not off-putting. No, but it has. I mean, like the texture of a wild game fat, but it kind of tastes more like a beef fat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it should be pointed out and. Viewers will know this if they watch our video, Bison versus Beef. Bison are in the bovine family. Yeah. So they're, elk are more closely related to deer, or excuse me, to um, horses than they are bison, so. And you can see the bison in the background on the wall. Some uh, people were asking about our spices, beardofbutchers.com. I have the six pack, Cody has a four pack with the sauce. Both of these items are available in the auction that we've been talking about with Raise Them Outdoors. So if you guys want one, go over to that auction, support a great cause. Um, if you missed the auction, go to beardofbutchers.com. You can snag one of those. We'll ship them all over the world. Um, we're I think eat. we're pretty close to wrapping this up. So we are at about an hour and a half. We said a half hour. Yeah, we said a half hour. So that, uh, And it's an hour and a half. <laughs> we hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, just as we're getting ready to part ways, we're gonna eat some of this steak. We're gonna gorge on bison steak. Uh, maybe we'll take time to answer a few more questions. Somebody said they just bought the four pack. Thank you very much. Somebody said, we'll change your life. Thanks for that. <laughs> uh, da -da. How long does it take to ship to Kenya? It just depends on the carrier. So it's not going through the Suez <laughs> too soon. Yeah. <laughs> Um, somebody said hi from Australia. Howdy, mate. Cheers. Somebody said hi from New Zealand. Thanks, Heap. Do more hunting videos. So that's the plan. I agree. That's where Cody I comes agree. in. I agree. We're going to make another trip out west uh, to see Cody for sure. Hello from Poland. Well done. Um, Who wants to see a bear video? Who wants to see us kill a bear? Those bear burgers, the boys, the boys want to do that. So I will say, I have it on record. Was it Seth that said bear burgers were his favorite meat that he's ever had? Amazing. Maybe, on the, maybe his favorite burgers. <laughs> they, favorite yeah, burgers. they were they were amazing. We ate them in the mountains, and then we went went back to Cody's and we cooked them at his house. So bear is, black bear is phenomenal. I will say that there's a there's a difference when you eat something on the mountain. <laughs> I, uh, there's a difference when you eat something on the mountain, you're starving and you've hiked and you, you just can't even stand up anymore. 
I think one night Seth had three dehydrated meals. So three of them. I was that hungry. Bear burgers taste really good when you need three meals to eat dinner. All right. Yeah, so um, throw your ideas in. Um, let us know what you guys want to see. We have more videos planned. Don't forget to follow us on all the social media channels, uh, Beard, the Beard Butchers uh, on Facebook, Beard Butcher Blend on Instagram. We've even got a TikTok. You can check us out there, the Beard Butchers. Uh, one more time, Cody, tell everybody. <laughs> Scott's pointing at his son, Ben. He's gnawing on that bone. How is it? Pretty tasty. All right, one more time as we depart. Thank you, everybody. This has been awesome. Yeah. Tell us what this is about, Cody. Yeah, thanks. One thanks more time. Again to everyone. This is uh, all for a nonprofit called Raise Them Outdoors. We're about getting kids in the outdoors, teaching them about where and how to get their own meat, how life works, and how to hunt, and all those cool things uh, that all three of us love to do. And uh, so, this is a big, uh, we're going to raffle off some prizes for that. So, we have a fundraiser going on right now. Uh, over at Galabid, G A L A B I D dot com forward slash R E O 21. If you guys want to go over there? We're doing a raffle for a brand new Traeger Ironwood 885 and a Birch Barrel. So go get some tickets. We're going to select that at 8 o'clock tonight. Today is the 27th. So you see if this after March, March 27th. 27th. Uh, it's not going on anymore, but you can uh, go. If, you, if it's over, go follow Raise Them Outdoors on YouTube. Yep. Because um, this a, will happen annually, correct? Yep. yep. We're going to do this annually. And uh, if you want to see a really, really cool kids hunt that we did uh, in Montana, we took a couple kids on their first hunt and they absolutely had a blast. It was really cool to see. So that's over on our Raise Them Outdoors channel and we're going to do a lot more of that stuff. So if you guys like hunting content and seeing kids get in the outdoors, go follow Raise Them Outdoors. You Until heard it. next time, it's the Beard of Butchers along with Cody Rich. Our and buddy Cody from Bozeman, Montana. You guys are awesome. We love every single one of you. Don't forget to subscribe because we got tons more coming. Enjoy See your ya. evening, folks. Thank you.